understanding of what is actually going on there. But I'm curious, what what challenges have you experienced from your perspective as a filmmaker in South Africa and how have they kind of influenced your approach to your work now? Challenges are many as a filmmaker in South Africa. Um, number one uh, would be uh, access to, to funding. You know, uh, that's a big one. Luckily, we have a, a sort of a national body that, uh, national institution that funds, you know, gives grants to filmmakers. But um, it's always a challenge because there's just so many of us. And we're all applying and sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Excuse me. Um, sometimes it's not enough. Okay, most of the time it's not enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I feel like that's a that's a worldwide, you know, uh, problem. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for taking your time to speak with me. I'm really excited to speak with you. I was able to see your film last night. Uh, good morning. It's it's if you don't, it's it's still playing. Um, <laughs> okay. Very, very excited, excited to speak to you about this work. Um, so, Kaiser, if you could just tell me a little bit about yourself, right? And maybe a little bit about your journey as a director um, and what brought you to here today. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me, man. I'm really grateful to be here. Um, it's, it's an honor to be, you know, speaking to somebody not from Africa about an Africa good movie um and i guess that's the goal right uh, as a filmmaker to um have your stories just like travel and uh connect with as many people as possible so thank you thank you for giving me that opportunity um i am a guy from uh south africa man who just fell in love with stories uh from a very young age my grandmother used to tell me you know uh folklore stories uh bedtime stories um um so i think that's that's where my sort of passion for storytelling started um at like four or five years old um and then i grew up in the 90s so i just consumed a lot of tv <laughs> a lot of uh mostly american television because that's like mostly what we had um uh, growing up in in Bulukwani, which is in the north of uh, of South Africa um so just a lot of television a lot of movies and uh, a lot of music as well um I grew up on a lot of like uh 90s and uh, early 2000s hip-hop music um so the storytelling aspect of you know of that craft uh, um just like was something that resonated with me and just like um the story of like people who look like me um but who were not necessarily uh where i'm from you know um the black american experience and i guess the, uh, the black african or black south african experience is quite similar because you know black people are sort of the same all, all over the world wherever you go um so that resonated with, with me a lot um so yeah music movies television um art media i just you know swallowed it all up and uh um decided to study film um wait first i i took a pit stop uh, uh first yeah. I, I found that a lot of filmmakers do this actually like I, I met a lot of filmmakers who study something uh for the first year of like university or whatever and and pivot um soon after so i i, I studied uh bcom um management and economics and um after a year of just exploring that, I realized that uh, I want something more creative in my life. So I switched over to film school, um, studied uh, film in Durban. And yeah, I've just been working in the industry, the local South African, you know, um, film industry for a couple of years. And then I just decided to follow my dream and pursue my passion for creating my own stuff. And uh, yeah, we're here now uh, with Good Morning. Hey, Matt. So I, I don't know if anyone has told you this yet, but you are, you know, the film industry is, a, you're, you're a benefit to the film industry. The way that you're helping kind of raise the, you know, raise the bar. Like I'm, I was watching this film and I'm like, this is not a debut film. This is somebody's oh. fourth or fifth film. This is somebody who really understood the assignment and nailed it. 
Um, I, I know I'm a huge fan of what I saw. Like the the first thing that stood out to me was the cinematography, along with the soundtrack and the way that you were able to capture emotions, capture shots, and just pace the movie so well. I'm just I'm blown away. Um, Thank you, man. And I, I also noticed that you you have a really good sense of the well, not just the African identity, but the social issues that these young women are going through um, in this film. Can can you talk a little bit about how you I what influence or what inspired this story in Good Morning? Um, what inspired the story Good Morning or uh, the social you know challenges of women? Or should I just like both? <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Um, so I uh, was raised by uh, by women. You know, um, I've got four sisters, um, raised by a single mom as well. Um, and yeah, I grew up with a lot of women, I guess, um, in my life. Um, the story was inspired really by um, the shades from my childhood. Like, I look at it as. Um, like just different pieces of my childhood I sort of like mashed them all together in one script and uh, I tried to um, make sense of like uh, my childhood uh, mostly adolescence you know teens um, went through a lot um, but I think the main thing was the main theme really in Good Morning is the theme of mourning um, obviously like uh, love and love and loss as well you know um, so yeah, it's obviously good morning with the uh, M O U R M A N G. So um, this was inspired by the death of uh, my father uh, when I was like four years old. Um, so it was just like the idea of uh, processing death as a young person. Um, so the main character really uh, is is me, but not in a not in a direct way, you know. Um, so also like a friend of mine passed away um, when we were in high school. Um, he had a motorcycle uh, accident. Um, so I sort of like weave that in as well. Um, so just the whole idea of dealing with, with mourning and loss as a young person. Um, I think there are like five, five stages of mourning. Um, I'm not sure about like each one, but like uh, denial is a big one um and i thought um you know like as a young person for me personally the denial manifested as imagination because like you're trying to cope with you know uh with the, the loss uh, and the mourning you know um so uh as a young person like when you're young like your your mind works in images like your your, your mind works in imagination so you process things through imagination like for instance, a big one, um, The Lion King helped me deal with uh, the loss of my father uh, because just that whole circle of life situation um, or theme helped me process the idea of, you know, um, sometimes uh, you're here and then you um, you go away, but you don't really go away, really. Um, you, you sort of exist in the spiritual realm. So that's really what the main character, Ayanda, is, is going through, you know. Um, just processing this person who she loved so much um, um, in her mind, in her young mind, and she does this by uh, imagining that he's still here. So that kind—that's of, kind of what uh, inspired uh, the film. And yeah, the journey of women—it's just—I um, think it happened uh, by by chance that like um, all the main characters are, are females. Really, I, I didn't set out to be like yeah i'm just gonna you know <laughs> write female stories um but uh i think it's such a delicate you know um sort of story um so i guess uh, female characters um made sense you know it really just happened sub subconsciously you know and also like i wanted to write a story about myself but not about myself mm -hmm. i want to make myself like the the main you know sort of uh focus so i think you know shifting things a bit um that's probably how it it it, it, it came out like that as a, as a female story um so yeah that's that's sort of 
in a nutshell, in a long <laughs> How did you well, find your how did you find your balance in, you know, telling aspects of what you wanted to share about your own personal experience versus what served the narrative in the film? Like what what challenges did you encounter and how did you make those decisions? Um, it's a good question. I, I just gave it time, you know. Um, I wrote the story over like two years, you know. Um, so I definitely wanted to tell my story, but obviously, you know, it had to fit into the narrative. So I'd write. You know, um, look at it a bit, give it to some people uh, that I trust, who I trust. Um, and I guess most people just help me to, you know, sort of uh, create that balance. You know, sometimes like when you're writing, you you write, let's say you, you write um, during the day, you go to bed and then you look at it the next morning and you're like, man, this is trash. I was just talking about <laughs> <laughs> this is just like, um, you know, uh, to I was just deep in my ego while writing this and just scratch it off you know and find something else so the balance is just like just time just time you give it time let it rest let it marinate um and then um get to a place of okay cool this this feels like a story and also I feel satisfied like I feel like I I was able to you know um um, you know, t tell my story as as well as you know, telling a story that uh, people will hopefully resonate with. I noticed that this story it, it really dives deep into African identity, but me as an African American in New York, I felt like I connected and I can identify with this story. But I'm curious, what? Was, what do you want fans to take away from this story, both in Africa and maybe on an international scale? I think the idea that African identity is broad. Um, I, I, I'm from South Africa and uh, blackness is, is broad in South Africa. Africanness is, is broad, you know. Um, Probably due to, you know, factors like colonization and apartheid and whatever. Um, and just like the diverseness of uh, where we come from. So, um, yeah, being African, being black is not a, it's not a monolith, man. Um, I think we're seeing that sort of like, um, like a, how should I put this? Like a, I'd say like a social African Renaissance type of like era. Uh, I, I'd say mainly due to music, you know, Afrobeat, you know, I'm a piano, you know, I, I feel like um, Africans and African Americans and just like um, other Africans from the diaspora could be Brazil, could be, you know, France, we're all, you know, um, getting to know each other again. I feel like we're, we're distant cousins and we're all getting to, you know, meet each other again uh, because of the internet and, and music and art, you know. So we're all just like, you know, trying to um, find ourselves again. And I think the best way is to just like express ourselves through the art so that we can realize that like it's so broad, like blackness is so broad. Um, they're different kinds of uh, black people everywhere. We speak different languages. We mm -hmm. come in different shades, different cultures, you know. Um, so, yeah, African identity is broad, man. Uh, you can't box it in. Um, and I think it's important to to communicate these different stories from different places because there's a lot of, like, ignorance out there. There's a lot of um, stereotypes out there, you know. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big basketball fan um, and South Sudan and um, uh, the, the USA team uh, played recently and um, South Sudan nearly won and there's some dude, I think his name is Gilbert Arenas, um, he's, yeah. he's an ex-basketball player and the stuff he, that he said about that, he was like, oh, we nearly lost to the Ahi Ahi tribe, those guys don't have shoes and I was like, man, that's crazy, you have such a big platform and that's how you think and that made me think that like a lot of people 
probably think like you do. <laughs> so, which is why it's so important for us to, you know, make stuff and uh, put it out there so that we can meet each other again, you know. Um, yeah. African right. identities, bro. I I totally understand that. I know that um, yeah. I've, I've been doing a lot of world traveling lately. And I, you know, in Hawaii, I was going to events and there were people doing cultural dances that they didn't realize that they were doing dances that originated in Africa. It was just something that they thought they created. And then mm -hmm. we would look on YouTube and we would see like, no, this is this is where it came from. And they're like, it's in our DNA. Uh, I know that there's a huge misconception of what Africa is like based off of what's portrayed in media to yeah. Americans. And I was grateful I had the opportunity to go to Cape Town and see it at least that part of South Africa for myself to get a better understanding of what is actually going on there. But I'm curious, what what challenges have you experienced from your perspective as a filmmaker in South Africa and how have they kind of influenced your approach to your work now? Challenges are many as a filmmaker in South Africa. Um, number one uh, would be uh, access to, to funding. You know, uh, that's, that's a big one. Luckily, we have a, a sort of a national body that, uh, national institution that funds, you know, gives grants to filmmakers. But um, it's always a challenge because there's just so many of us. And we're all applying and sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Excuse me. Um, sometimes it's not enough. Okay, most of the time it's not enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I feel like that's a, that's a worldwide, you know, uh, problem. Um, and, um, I don't know, man. Um, I think just filmmaking is difficult. It's just innately difficult wherever you are, you know, uh, whether you're in Africa or, um, America or China, it's, it's just a very, very difficult, um, um, career or calling rather, uh, to follow. Um, there's always challenges, there's challenges with, with money, like I said challenges with like finding the right story um because like when you find a story like you kind of have to stick with it for a while you know it took me five years to complete this this one story and like as a as a creative you always have like different stories different concepts you know today you want to be a filmmaker tomorrow you want to be a fashion designer or whatever <laughs> so like i think the challenge is focusing you know um and i think when you focus um everything else sort of uh, falls into play the money falls into play a big one is the people uh, fall into play you know um you, you can't work as a in a as a as an individual um if you want to make something great like a, a great film like you have to rely on a team of talented like-minded people and talented like-minded people take time to um takes time to find them you know um, so uh, that process of just being patient and waiting for the right people to you know um, appear mm -hmm. which is literally what they do like when you set your intentions and you focus you know the money appears the people appear um, and when you get in set like the, the craziest thing is that you don't really make the the movie that you set out to make you make the movie um, you make the movie that sort of, um, um, that wants to be made, like weird things happen, like you have to rearrange and, you know, change things and like, you realize oh, that, damn, that was what I was supposed to do, but that wasn't the plan. So, you know, the challenge is just like keeping focused, you know, um, through the ups and downs, through the challenges and just trying to get to that finish line. Well, you, you, you are doing it. You, you are Thank doing you, it really well. You're, you, I'm so impressed. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. If nobody else Thank has you. said it, I'm very proud of what you've done. Thank um, you, you and my mom share the same sentiments. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers who want to tell stories rooted in their culture or heritage now that you've, you've gone from beginning to end in one project? Yo, that dreaded question, what advice? 
What advice um, you give to aspiring filmmakers? Um, um, just like try to find um, a story that uh, is close to you and stick to it. Um, don't try to tell a story that panders to, you know, the streamers, uh, the audience, I'm not saying ignore the audience, ignore the platform that you want to um, sort of, that you want your fo- uh, film to live on. That's quite important. Um, but just make sure that it's a, it's a you story because like, I think what differentiates filmmakers is a style, you know, style and like personal journey and your own personal message. So, you know, um, take your time to find that. Um, and also like, yeah, just be patient. Um, again, I keep saying this you need to be patient. You sort of like have to wait for all the, the pieces to come together, you know, um, and as you're waiting and as you're working, um, um, the story sort of like builds itself, you know, um, if you do it prematurely, if you just want to make a film now, I just want to make a, you know, a feature after varsity and, um, you know, be a, be one of those kids who just like become successful young at 21 or well, every artist kind of like one, wants that for themselves. Like you want to be, you know, a prodigy, but that's not the case. Sometimes you have to grow and learn and experience, um, and, and live your life and, all of that stuff that you, you know, um, all of the stuff that you gain through the process, that's what you put in your film. That's your, that's your trademark. That's the thing that makes you unique. So yeah, just, just be patient. Um, and also I think lean on people, you know, be, be a kind person, be a good person because like, that's, uh, how you sort of, um, gain trust, you know, people, um, love working with people that appreciate them especially talented people talented people know their worth and people know that they're talented so if you're an asshole you know people are not going to share um um, the talent that they have with you so try to be a a, as nice of a person as possible um and yeah just don't stop stop I really appreciate that. I, and, and Kaiser, again, I, I know you're really busy. As I said, I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. Uh, so this will be my last question. Um, cool, man. Can you share anything about what you might be working on next? What we can get excited to see from you next? Is there anything that's rattling around in that brain of yours that you'd like to introduce to the world? Um, I've got a whole lot of stuff in development. Um, I think that's why I was so excited to um, take this interview because like, man, if there's anyone in New York who, who needs some concepts, who needs a co-producer, um, you know, just holler at me. Sure, Anthony's got, Anthony's going to put my handles and my email, um, wherever in the link in bio or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got a lot of stuff in development. Um, but I think, um, the one project that I'm quite ex- excited about is a documentary called Thread Carefully. Um, which is a documentary about uh, thrift culture, um, thrift clothing culture in in, in South Africa um, and its effects on the environment. Um, So we sort of like follow um, a couple of like young people who have started um, thrift uh, businesses in Joburg, Durban uh, and Cape Town. Um, Those are like the, the main sort of like um culture and clothing and fashion hubs in south africa we're just following them as they run their businesses and um um find dope clothing um to sell um and just like getting their perspective on um the effects of like fast fashion um on on the environment you know uh, which is a just a big problem that uh, we have the world uh, just uh, synthetic uh, textiles and um, the fact that a whole bunch of um, clothing gets like dumped in landfills, you know, um, and it, there's a lot of problems when it comes to the fashion industry. So we try to unpack that, like dyeing also, you know, um, um, which ends up in the ocean, you know. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just a cool 
um, culture documentary that also has like a sort of a social commentary on um, the environment. Um, and yeah, I think that's my style. Like I, I just love exploring the ideas and the lives and the opinions uh, and the perspectives of young African uh, people. Um, so yeah. Uh, please look out for that but yeah everything else is in development and uh, let's talk if you want to make something cool thank you so much i'm definitely going to put your socials out there i'm going to definitely share this to all my platforms i'm excited to uh see your career grow and then you know one day somebody will say hey i remember him from the movie blog <laughs> <laughs> yeah the guy with the water in the back <laughs> stay hydrated <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time, Kaiser. I really appreciate it. I hope fans are uh, look forward to seeing your new film, Good Morning. It's going to be releasing soon, I hope. Um, I'm going to yeah, share. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say absolutely. Um, we're screening at the African Diaspora International Film Festival in New York in December. Um, so yeah, please come out. Uh, please come and check it out. Um, it's it's going to be it's going to be dope. My first time traveling out of South Africa, actually. So. Um, it's going to be really, really fun uh, meeting uh, people from, from, you know, the U.S. and New York and uh, just meeting more black people who make films and who love films. So, yeah, it's going to be out soon um, on a streamer. Um, I'll, I'll let you know when it drops. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Heiser. Very, very happy to speak with you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. So let me...